Welcome to our lecture online and continuing with modern physics. Now we're going to talk about what we call the de Broglie wavelength. And the de Broglie was a very famous fa uh, physicist who decided that there was a lot of similarity between photons and electrons. We know that a photon is like a wave. It kind of you know, travels like a wave. It has a frequency, has a wavelength, travels speed of light. But they said that small particles such as electrons also seem to behave like waves. So when a particle, like an electron, is moving at some velocity v, it, they suspected, was also going to show wave-like properties, and therefore, as it traveled, it would have a wavelength, just like a photon would. And the question is, what is the wavelength of a moving particle like that? So starting out with the concept that the momentum of a photon is equal to h over lambda. Remember, h is Planck's constant, divided by lambda. And if we say that that's true for a photon, then that probably must be true for an electron as well. So they made a jump, a leap of faith, and they said, okay, if this is the same for an electron, we can also say that momentum is equal to h over lambda, assuming that a traveling electron will also have a wavelength. And of course, for an electron, the momentum is mass times velocity, so we can say that mass times velocity is equal to h over lambda. And then if we put lambda over there and mv over here, we can then say that lambda is equal to h, Planck's constant, divided by mv. All right, so what we're saying here is that the wavelength of any particle is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle and inversely proportional to the velocity. And of course, we still have Planck's constants there. All right, let's assume that's true. In our example, we're going to assume that the velocity of the uh, electron is 10,000 meters per second. If that's true, what will be the wavelength of such an electron? So we can then say that the wavelength lambda is equal to Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. We divide that by the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And we multiply that times times the velocity, which in our example is soon to be 10,000 meters per second. Okay, and then with a calculator, let's see what kind of wavelength we come up with. All right, so 6.626 e to the 34 minus, uh, divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus, and divided by 10,000 equals, and it looks like, hmm, 72.7 nanometers. So lambda equals 72.7 nanometers. Now that's kind of interesting. Remember that the wavelength of photons, visible light is between 400 and 700 nanometers. So it turns out that the wavelength of particles such as electrons is kind of comparable to the wavelength of photons. Now, of course, if this had been a proton and we put a proton in there, of course, the mass of a proton is about 2,000 times the mass of an electron, that means the wavelength would have been a lot smaller, a lot more difficult to see. But for very small particles like electrons, there is a sizable um, wavelength associated with the motion of that, of that particle. Anyway, so here you can see that this is how we determine the wavelength of a small particle moving at a high velocity.